this will take I probably should have done this beforehand but at least you're seeing literally what you have to do Okay, now I've got all the residual correlations in a column of data, and SPSS, uh, I'll do that afterwards, actually. So what I need to do, just two steps, I need to square these, so I'm going to transform compute and square these values, because I want to get rid of the negative values. So I just have to multiply var1 by var1, which will create a new vari variable called squared. Now I need to add 15 zeros to the bottom of this column. And it's 15 because that's equal to the number of variables in the data set. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And the reason you have to do that is tech it's just a technicality in terms of that's what CFA programs like AMOS do when they calculate SRMR because there, there are elements on the diagonal of the residual correlation matrix that are also included in the computation. So it's just a technicality if you want to get exactly what you would get in a CFA program. Now that I've added those, I can uh, calculate the average and then square root that value. So I would calculate the average of these square rooted values got mean and the mean is equal to 0 0.0004 so the average residual that's been squared is equal to 0 0.004 and then I just have to square root that value to get the SRMR value. So 0 0.0004 square rooted is equal to 0 0.02. So SRMR in this case is equal to 0 0.02, which is much less than uh, 0 0.06 or 0 0.08, depending on your demarcation criterion that you use for good fit. All right, so I've got a good fitting model here based on all the uh, based on the four or five fit indices I've calculated four in here and the third one which was the SRMR value uh, but that's not the f completion of a partial confirmatory fact analysis we have one more step to follow one more step to complete I have to look at the non-salient loadings associated with the pattern matrix and what I have to see there is that the loadings are not big. And the way that it's described in the paper that describes the technique is that they should form, they should be associated with a mean of zero and they should be relatively normally distributed and you shouldn't see any particularly large outlying values. It's not a perfect uh, technique for evaluating non-salient loadings, but it does get to the conceptual heart of what a confirmatory factor analysis is. And in the context of a partial confirmatory factor analysis, where all the loadings are estimated freely, this is 